Hey travelers, we're back, and this time I replaced Troy with my wife. So if if you haven't remembered from past a past vlog episode or two, this is Beth. And I thought I would get her in here to uh, to talk a little bit about gateway beers. And so that's the theme tonight is gateway beers. Uh, so not everybody is like me and is like beer since forever. Um, yes, I used to hate beer. Some of us, yeah, some of us <laughs> don't like beer right away in the beginning. And, and everybody thinks that, well, not everybody, I don't, I don't want to just lump everybody into a category, I guess, but... A lot of people that don't like beer think that it tastes like Coors Light or Bud Light or, you know, it's some kind of light, grainy, not so great beer. Or water. Or water. So why yeah. waste the calories? But yes. So let's talk a little bit, before we open up any of these beers, let's talk a little bit about what was your gateway beer? Uh, mine was a peanut butter porter. Peanut from butter porter. From Dangerous Man. From Dangerous Man. Yep. Yep. And it was delicious. That's... Oh, that was my favorite thing ever. So who was the person that, that uh, introduced that beer to you? You were? Yeah. Because you love me that much. Yes, I love you that much. And I figured if you were going to keep shooting episodes with us and go along and travel with us, you probably should try to like beer at some yeah. point, right? How how far did I walk to go get that beer? I don't remember. I think you walked three miles round trip to get peanut butter yes, porter once. Six, yeah. six crawlers of it, and I carried them all the way way back to the yeah. bus. Yeah, through some sketchy <laughs> neighborhoods nonetheless. So not only do you like craft beer now, you're willing to walk through sketchy neighborhoods and yes. walk long distances to get it. Yes. Yeah. And uh, the peanut butter porter that was uh, the, the imperial peanut yes. butter porter. How cold was it out that day? Uh, negative 20. And you waited in line for? Over an hour. Yeah. And it was delicious. We got it? Two, bottles two bottles of it and it was so good. So see, people can like beer that don't usually like beer. It's there there's something out there for everybody. I'm, yes. I am convinced of it. And so tonight we're going to have some that that I think and maybe you can tell me if if you think they are too. I agree. That are gateway beers. Yes. That um that are not so offensive to the palate and that maybe something that and and I still like, you know, these beers that don't actually what they may not taste like beer. Let's put it that way. You know, they're going to taste Tradi more like something else they may with not a little like, bit of beer. Yeah, they may than not taste beer. like traditional beer. Yes. Let's put it that way. So this one is uh, Odd Side, and it's a blueberry, raspberry, lime, fruit sickle. There's a lot going on there, and it's pretty. It's very pretty and delicious, I'm sure. This isn't a sour, though. It does not say that it's a sour, Ooh, it but be. does it smell like it? It smells delicious. It's a fruit sickle. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, that's what it smells like. So it's very pretty. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Yep. Not what you would say is a beer. No. No. Delicious. Juicy. And actually, a little, bu a little more bubbly than what normally. Not hoppy in in the least. No. I mean, there's there's probably you know. They probably Sweet. threw a pellet or three in in the in the batch, and so that you can call it a beer. It's very sweet, though. It's good. Mhm. Mm very very good. Well, it got a little tart there too, which is good. So but it's not, not overly not, sweet. Not like you would not no. you would like you would say a sour or a kettle sour or no. anything like that. It's it's not really sour at all. It's but really it's not overly sweet either. So. Kind of got a nice balance to it. Something that if you're looking to introduce your your significant other or maybe a friend that whines about drinking beer with you all the time. Yes. Maybe introduce them to that. And if you're in the Eau Claire area, you can go out to the coffee grounds, talk to Candace. She'll set you up with something like that. They have so that. much good beer there. Oh, don't they? Oh, mm, yeah. Good selection. So now we're going to move on to maybe something... So people that, that are like a coffee drinker. So this is Bent Paddle's Cold Press Black. And it's a it's probably what I would consider the least offensive um, coffee beer. And by that I mean it doesn't it's not overly coffee. So it's and it's not overly hoppy and it's not, you know, it's over, very smooth. overly like a beer anyway. Mm -hmm. But it's something that, that if you were looking to introduce people to beer, 
it's something that I would have them try. Only 6% alcohol, too, so it's not crazy heavy. No, and if they do like coffee, this would be something very nice for them to try. Have them smell it first. That way they can smell the coffee on it. Mm, that's so good. It's still really good. Yeah. And Ben Paddle, what a great... They, they have a new place in Duluth now, too, so... Mm-hmm. Go visit there if you're ever up in Duluth. Ooh. And you better hurry because winter's coming. That's, right? Uh, <laughs> yes, it is. You didn't get that joke anyway, but that's okay. <laughs> winter's coming. Oh. No? no. Okay. <laughs> she still doesn't get it. <laughs> Maybe I don't want to. That's fine. That is fine. See, and you still like that beer. Because it's like drinking coffee. So how how is your we'll we'll pause for a moment. How is how has your progression been since peanut butter porter? Obviously, that's not the only beer that you drink anymore. No, but I really like really went into all the dark beer after that because it was smooth and it wasn't it didn't have a lot of that bite to it. That the hoppy some, bite. I yeah. I still am not a fan of hops, but I can appreciate a good beer. Yeah. But I like the darker ones because it's you know. Coffee and chocolate. So and the porters peanut butter and the stouts. And, yes. And, and, but you've kind of progressed outside of that too. Yeah, to now the I like... the sours and the Berliner Weisses and... Good Radler too is just nice and light to have in the summer that it's refreshing, but it's not so much beer. Yeah. Flavor, hoppy flavor, and that's why I like that too. But, but yeah, I I don't know. So you wouldn't consider yourself a hop? No. Okay. Not my favorite thing. Me neither. But that's okay. But that's some people that's, enjoy that. That's part of the great thing that's or you know, that's great about craft beer is that you don't have to join the trends because people are still making, you know, even though a lot of breweries are making hazy IPAs and overly hopped IPAs or over the hop beers in general, most of them recognize that not everybody's a hop head. Yes. And so you can go into the majority of these places and they will have something for everyone. Now, granted, some places you walk in and 75% of what they have is overly hot beer. But even even a place like Surly, if you walk into their brewery, they will have something that you can drink. Yes. So. Do you think a lot of the places that have a ton of hoppy beer is because the brewer likes that? I would, say it's, kind I would of say it's a combination of the brewer probably started out that way. That was the kind of beer that he or she liked. But the and then when they when they started um you know producing it and they opened a brewery, the people that came also liked that beer. And so they just keep on that trend. But like it and I think I think Omar at um Surly is that way. I, oh, yeah. I think he loves over, overly hop stuff. He but, loves. And he loves to talk. But I still remember when we went to the original. Yes. Way back before they were big. And that was quite an interesting. But, the, the, and their beer hasn't really, I mean, their beer has changed. The, the aggressiveness of yes. their beer has not changed. It no. is still very hoppy. And that is okay because there are a lot of people that like that. Yes. But I feel like he had a passion for that type of beer. Sure. Which is kind of, it's fun. That's but, if, what's... but if you walk into their brewery now, you can get, one of my favorites is something they call Smoke. And it's a, uh, it's like a smoked Bach type beer. Fantastic. Not overly hopped. A lot of nice smoke flavor to it. And that's, that's something that I always know that I can drink there. But that's really good, isn't it? I like going back and forth because it makes <laughs> Well, now we'll go. We'll go on to the last beer, and this this one is something that just came out this year. Or at least I haven't seen it up until this year. It's Tall Grass German Chocolate Cake, and I I can honestly say, if you went through these other two beers for someone that didn't like to drink beer, I would open this for them. And if they don't like this, they're probably never gonna like beer. And, and I mean, as sad as it is, they're, they're probably just never going to like it unless they don't like sweet things, which I don't know of too many people that wouldn't like German chocolate cake. Can you think of anybody? Or coconut, no. coconut. Well, yeah. Do they like coconut? Coconut the and then chocolate. Oh, it smells so good. This is 
Landon's favorite kind of cake. Yeah. Make it for his birthday. Yeah. Every day. Now, granted, this is not a beer that you're going to have two of, even. One no. is one is going to be it's more plenty. than enough. The cold press black, you can you can easily drink two of those. Absolutely. And that that odd sides one, you could probably drink that all day. You I mean, eventually it'll probably get too sweet for you to drink too many more, but Yes. All right. Well, let's let's try this out and see what you think. I think I've had this before, but It's not really the smell you get is not is not sweet. You're not really getting anything on the nose. Coconut good but the first thing you taste is coconut Mm -hmm. with a little bit of chocolate on the back end i would say we could probably even get we still have a few friends that don't like beer so much i would say we could probably get them to maybe maybe if we hit it in something that didn't look like a beer can because we have some friends that you have to kind of you know kid gloves it where you know where you hide things from your kids I mean, we have kids, so we that's... We never do that. Yeah. For those of you, you parents out there, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, just pull that with your friends, you know. Um, so, yeah, and there is there is about a billion, and I'm exaggerating, but there's about, in my mind, there's about a billion other beers that are like this that you can introduce the non-beer drinker to. Don't call it beer even if, you know, even if you have to, just don't call it beer. Go, this is my new favorite drink. Have some. And then tell them that it's beer afterwards, you know. The best thing you can do, especially the the environment that we're in now with craft beer booming so, so big, try to introduce them to it. And, and I guess if, you know, your efforts are a failure in the end, then I, there's probably no hope for that person. Because who doesn't like craft beer? Um. Well, a really fun place to take them to try fun beers like this too would be we're going to the Minnesota State Fair and they have all kinds of beer. Like all mini, the goofy, that's when all the goofy stuff comes out. Yes. So mini yeah, donut the, the, beer. The mini donut beer. Um, Tin Whiskers is doing a dill pickle beer. Yep. I've had it already and it's actually surprisingly good. Um, that small that beer. one that one if I if I could jar up and have for a long time, that would would go good as a chaser for a bloody Mary. Yes. Dill pickle beer. Mm-hmm. That's very good. Um what was well, the other one you said? I'm sorry, I was beer. talking over you. That's s'more beer. Yeah, they they um that s'more beer at the at the state fair, they, they rim the glass in graham crackers yes. and chocolate. And then they float a marshmallow on it. So what was I think the one that's, that, that's Flat Earth that does yeah. that one. What was the one that had a strip of bacon on the top last year? Beer and bacon? Oh, boy. I, I forget. I remember I had it. It was really good. I'm trying to remember. I think it was a maple bock, though, because it was like a breakfast beer. And then it had bacon on the top of it. Yeah. Um, if what, you know, comment below because we, we have a hard time remembering. We're getting old. Um, well, no, there's just so many that we tried. <laughs> well, it's true, and that's the and that's the great thing too. I mean, uh, and and not to offend wine drinkers because wine is fun too. And I still a lot love of, wine there's too. A lot of different wines yes. out there, but they don't have that at the state fair where you can just go all around and they got crazy different wines. That's what they do with the beer, at least at the Minnesota State Fair. So yes. check that out if you can. And, and and we're not getting paid at all by the Minnesota State Fair unless they want to pay us. Um, we, we With accept, a bucket of cookies. We accept, <laughs> oh, even if they give us a bucket of Sweet Martha's cookies. Yes. That's payment enough for us. Take a bag of mini donuts. And Alex would take a bag of mini donuts and maybe, uh, is it Prano Pups? Oh, is that what the, the mm-hmm. big, oh yeah, those big are good. Foot long corn dog. Now I'm hungry. I know. Again. <laughs> anyway, um, so that's that's what we have for you. Uh, you know, introductory be- or not introductory beers. Um, gateway. Gateway beers. I don't know why that word just keeps eluding me. Anyway, gateway beers. And, uh, you know, get, get your friends, if your friends aren't beer drinkers, get them to try something. You know, it's uh, you'll be surprised and maybe they'll thank you later on and maybe they'll get into it. And maybe they'll buy you some neat beer. And... Maybe comment below what your gateway beer was. Yeah, we'd love to. We'd love to hear what your gateway beer is. 
and maybe it was PBR, and that's okay. We're not here to judge you. Yeah, what's your my, gateway beer? My... <laughs> mm, I'd love to hear this because I think I know, but love to hear it. I I honestly, it, my guess is it was Coors Light. Yeah. Yeah. But like I said, I've liked beer for a long, long the time. The banquet beer. Well, Coors, Coors Banquet. Yeah. What they used to call Coors Original. Yeah, so I had a lot of that. I used to drink, uh, oh, Bud Light Ice or, you know, all the, I mean. Paps. I'm dating myself here, I but know, that's anyway. So, yeah, comment below. We'd love to hear from you, especially your gateway beers. We'd love to see what your gateway beers were. And uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel. Share it with your friends. Like all of our other videos. And um, if you're on the other social medias like Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, look us up on there. And you can find us on Untapped, which for some reason it comes up as November. But we'll have to talk to Troy about that sometime when we talk uh, about Untapped. It's a good month. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, from all of us at Taproom Travelers, we'll see you next week. And maybe there'll be some new faces in here. You never know. Prost. Prost. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, you can click down below where there's some more episodes for you to watch. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on episodes that you do watch. We hope to see you next time. <laughs>